So Hunty, we're here to look at some of the most iconic games you played in a Wolf shirt. First up, last game of the season, 2010-11, Molyneux Stadium against Blackburn Rovers. Both teams one point above the relegation zone. How are you feeling going into this one? Like anything, this game here now, it's coming out as excitement. An entire season, all the hopes and dreams comes down to one day, one game to save themselves and secure some... In these situations, Mick would go to the players he trusted as well, wouldn't he? Yeah, for sure. He had been going to three or four tried and trusted teams just before that that he was reliable on. And no, he would have, like, and even my face, I don't really give much away. I'm like, right, come on and let's have it. Long ball forward. Hoylet able to bring it down and turn, looking to run at Mancien. Oh, crunching challenge from Carl Henry. Obligatory yellow card for Carl Henry early on. Straight away. He's trying to talk his way out of trouble. I'm having flashbacks already of the game. <laughs> And I know, I'm, I, I know I'm semi at fault, maybe, for one of the goals. I begin to think I over-defended on certain occasions. Sarkado to hit it, it's off Roberts, it's in! Jammy goal. Jammy goal, but I look at myself and go, why, why am I going to help George there? I don't need to stay with the, the right back, I think, who played. But I'm trying to help George where he probably didn't need it at that time. So you're thinking Salgado might have been your man here? Yeah, I should have just, yeah. Because if, if I stay with him, he doesn't get the ball. First blood to Blackburn on a day that both sides dare not lose. <laughs> it's a rugby tackle. That's a book in today. For sure. You must have had a good relationship with Howard Webb there. Do you know what? I have a little cheeky smile. The big Samba comes for a little bit too. He knows you're trying to talk, talk yeah. about a book in. He's trying to get you away. Look at my hair. <laughs> oh, God. But that, that was a big part of your game, wasn't it? Trying to get after people, trying to get the, the team forward. I always said your energy was infectious for the rest of the team. Here you are again, look. Just look how far across the pitch you come, just to try and get the team going. I love that position because I'm coming from the blind side. You'll know as well, he can't see me coming to win the ball, so I can nip it in. If I do get it, then I'm kind of driving forward with the ball. He can't see me. Robinson. With a big long ball forwards into the penalty area. Craddock's head away, drops to Emerton. Oh no! It's a stunner. Oh, that's a good hit, isn't it? How, how deep are we here, actually? You look at yeah. you look at when that free kick comes in from a dead ball situation. We're already in the box. Big Wayne Hennessy behind you. Probably three going for one ball, and Jody's always going to get there because of the type of guy he was. Even Henry shouldn't even be there heading at all. The mood has very much turned at Molyneux. Here's Hoylet. Inside, inside another! Oh no, it's three! Disaster! That is shell shot. 3 0 down, first half. I was in the dressing room, so I knew the other scores, and, and Blackpool were, were doing well at United. I think Birmingham were holding Tottenham, and we were, we were banging trouble at this point. We were, we were getting relegated. We were on the ropes, to be fair, from. 25 minutes in, 20 minutes in, we needed half time pretty quick. Wolves have a mountain to climb. They need a miracle now. I think half time was moments that I remember forever. Uh, I think Mick come in, gave us a little bit, and then it was flat. It was really flat. Yeah. I remember TC rallying. Yeah. I remember myself having a little bit of a go at getting people geared up. It was really hard. It was yeah. like, we just need to get back out there again. Yeah. But TC, I, I remember to myself, oh, he's right. So they had a really good dynamic, Mick and TC, didn't yeah. they? And I remember on this occasion, Mick was usually a great speaker, but he was angry, wasn't he, at this point? Do you know what I mean? We, we come in and we're 3-0 we're down. The, goal, the nature of the goals were given away. And after almost, I remember Mick speaking, then he needed a minute himself, didn't he, just to step back and yeah. collect his thoughts. And TC come in. Listen, and he made it's a, great management that they planned it. Yeah. I think yeah. Mick was so disappointed in us. Yeah and how we performed, he'd put all his trust in us on that day to go and do a job for Wolves and him, and we were terrible. Like, we were really just nervous on the day, the goals didn't help obviously, but TC, to be fair to him, that was for me TC's magic moment in yeah. the team. We just needed a moment, didn't we? Just needed something. Flick on towards Hunt, what can he do from here? Now he's going to win Wolves a free kick. And these moments now, I already know what I want to do in my head. Yeah. It's already planned, but can take forever. Look, I'm not even that disguised. I'm not really a poker player, you can tell. 
if I'm a Blackburn player, I know you're not shooting from your run up. So I'm looking to, to see what else I'm trying to try. I might have the Ronaldo in the bag, you never know. <laughs> Henry stood in front of the ball. It'll be Stephen Hunt, plenty to aim for. It's laid across, it's O'Hara! It's brilliant! They've got one back, game on at Molyneux! So important! Great finish. It's a great finish. It's the weight of it that's important, as you know, if you come up from that you, angle. You watch the replay, it's, it's, it's a tough pass because it's so easy to bobble this pass that you hit, isn't it? Bobble or hit it too hard yeah. out of fear of somebody getting it. I, I do back myself under pressure. I generally, I've always done. You'd be the same. Yeah. If you've got a ball coming from the other side on your right foot, you want it like that to yeah. be able to go on and strike Definitely. it. Definitely. Look, there's no bobble. Yeah. Straight along the ground. A little and Jamie. Bit Jamie got a bit of stick, but what a footballer. I listen to the crowd now. You can hear him singing. You only need one goal. I was in the dressing room with two or three other Rangers lads, and Mick had initially said that he didn't want to know any scores. But at this point, he wanted to know everything. So every time something happened on Sky Sports News, they would run out, tell Mick, come back in. And we were a little bit wary if we were given the, the right information. Like, do we kind of want to go out to Mick and say, we're safe if we score, but then something happens late on in another game and we've do you know what? it. So it was, it was difficult and we just didn't want to get that message wrong. But back then, Mick would have been so stubborn. Yeah. He'd have gone, no, 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 we win our game, that's it. Yeah. And then as you say, all of a sudden, Mick, the gaffer, wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. But, so important. Yeah. Again, Wayno's delivery. I know it's a real long ball, but for him, it's a real long pass. His distribution was excellent, wasn't it? Fletch again. And it's Hunt. Oh, stunning! Absolutely stunning! And it could be absolutely massive for Wolverhampton Wanderers. There's a lifeline. Oh. I don't know how many times I've showed this to my daughters. <laughs> I've run out of times, but I do know the goal has actually got us in a position where we're going to be safe, but I still can't allow myself to enjoy it. If I, if I take back that celebration and just give it the big one, I would every time. But You talk about remaining calm under pressure, such an important moment of the game. Firstly, the touch, and then you didn't snatch it at all, just calm. I knew it was a guided finish, uh, been in their positions in training, you can latch at it, you can go through bodies if you want. But if I was going to get it in, it had to be in at the far post with a, with a bit of finesse for a change. And all the timings, all the visualisations over the six months for that moment, yeah. it just come to, to reality then. This is bizarre, isn't it? I remember because no one wants to... Blackburn are staying up, Wolves are staying up. You don't forget, you're full of the adrenaline, yeah. right? You're like, I want to go get the ball. Yeah. You're like, you have to stop yourself from running. Look at you edging to go. <laughs> This is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it really would, because if you play a five-a-side match, you want to try and win. No yeah. matter the occasion or whatever, listen, we were fairly happy at the end of it, for sure. <laughs> there it is, the final whistle. Relief and joy despite defeat. Wolverhampton Wanderers are still a Premier League team. TC there. We did it, Gaffer. Yeah. Mick was like, just leave me alone. Yeah. I want to go home and have a glass of wine or something, because he was exhausted. Another one of your games then, Hunty. West Brom, at home. What was the atmosphere like before these sort of games? The big derby games, your local rivals. Going onto the pitch, knowing that I'm in good shape, I'm fresh, I've had a couple of games under my belt. And then a derby game, full house, perfect. Derby Day is here again. Just nine miles separate these two. No love lost between the old rivals. A huge day in the old gold survival quest. The sun is shining, but will it be a golden day for this half of the Black So country? really, this was my first proper derby. Yeah. And was really excited by it. Never get nervous. Always excited by it. Just wanted the game to come and, and give it a go. I know there's a rivalry in, in this black country derby, but in terms of the fans, there was a bit of hatred there, wasn't there? There was definitely that divide, and even living in the Midlands now, I always sense it. Now, can you remember Mick's attitude at this point? Would, would he try and take it away from being a derby game, take the emotion out of it, or did he need that to rile you guys up? I don't think the gaffer needed to say much for these games. I think he was always, do the principles, do your basics right, and evolve off that and play off that. Again, bombed out for free kicks. Jamie's <laughs> on him there. Yeah, good technique, didn't he, Jamie? 
Yeah, listen, you, if you're uh, attacking a set piece and he was, he was crossing and you knew you had to get into certain areas, look, tempo. But then you're on corners though, so... Yeah, but Jamie can score then, can't he? Like, oh, so he, he needs boxer. to be able to score. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be Stephen Hunt to whip it in, left-footed. Oh, and it drops to Fletcher! Pure pandemonium of Molyneux! Sharp shooter, Fletch. Yeah, on the day he was electric as well. You know from Fletch, he's got really nice flicks and tricks, but when he's really on it, he's doing the basics really well, and then everything else comes natural to him because he's a really talented footballer at the time. A real number 10 if he wanted, and it could be a number nine as well. He was definitely one of the best strikers I've ever played with in terms of all round strikers. Good at into feet, technically. His touch was amazing, brilliant, wasn't it? Just kill it first time. And again, another one that would probably say his time at Wolves is a little bit injury prone when he picked up an ankle injury. Yeah. And that affected him then for the rest of his career. Hunt with a corner again. Left footed from the left hand side in front of the north bank. Jewel to the far post. He's back in. Gradio is there. It's turned in again. The Wolves have another. Oh, Fletch again. That's a great header, isn't it? Back across goal. Would you have worked on this? Because this looks like a bit of a training ground one because you're, you're driving this rather than curling it into the box. I'll be honest, it's not my best technique. I'd rather be curling it all day long. It was, it was driven. The main thing, it was committed yeah. and it was going at pace. Yeah, you so, see there, didn't you? The little sign to say, yeah, I'm driving this. Yeah, and the keeper thought he was coming, but a bit too much pace on it. 2 0 up in the first half in a derby. Doesn't get much better, does nice it? Nice feeling. It's going to be set here for Foley. Trying to play it through. Oh, mistake! Big mistake! Stephen Fletcher's in! Fletcher! It's three! It's a huge gift, but no one cares! Whenever Fletch goes through like that, yeah. he'd always be confident. Well, especially talk about you in this game. It's Stephen Fletcher's game, isn't it, this one? It's all right. Listen, there'll be a few. I'm sure <laughs> I'll get my moments eventually. Like, I think, I think my influence was on the day would have been pain free, running around, setting a tempo. And I don't mind admitting that, because that was part of my reason why I was so successful as a player to be able to play in the Premier League was, was my running ability and to set the tempo and then to be able to... Do you feel that like as an important role in your game to kind of... If you do it first, then other players will go with you. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I don't mind saying it. I actually got a buzz off it. Bottom wingy. Always away from Alakobi. Low ball across. Comes to Thomas. Goes down. Penalty. Oh, I do. Oh, look at him. Loved it. Lo <laughs> still, still getting the limelight. <laughs> Carl Emery hated anything about losing a game of football. He'd have been going mad at Adeline at this point. He had it in the locker, lad, to be fair, to make decisions like that that Mick didn't trust him on. Yeah, definitely. But he, he also had the ability to score a worldly goal and, yeah. and do that. Very gifted footballer, wasn't he, Addy? Yeah. But then he would maybe try Cruyff in his own box. High ball forwards. Stephen Hunt. Oh, that's naughty. Oh. <laughs> Can we show that again, please? <laughs> Can we go back? Oh, the old 70-30 in your own favour. The only regret I have about that is it wasn't Olsen. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of it. Tanks begin to empty, you can tell, can't you? That's why Carl Emery was great, wasn't he? He was so good at seeing danger. Underrated, wasn't he? Yeah, for sure. As a footballer. As a footballer and as a leader, really, he was animalistic in terms of wanting to, to win. I used to love playing with Carl Emery. Like, he would just look after you in the game. You knew he was always there. He's like a safety net for the team, wasn't he? For sure. Ward. Oh, Stephen Ward. Pass two. It's the box. Still going. Oh, what a chance. Just flash wide. He'd have deserved a goal in that game as well, wouldn't he, Wardy? Yeah. Because all that unselfish stuff. Here you go, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get this in slow mo. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Rich. <laughs> Whack. You're trying to atone for Steers there. Yeah. This is brilliant. I'm surprised he's chucking a little step over now in Steers at some point. Give it to me. Give it to me, George. Thank you. Oh, a little burst of pace. You must be an injury free. Definitely. Wear a silver as well. Get out of there, Silv. He can score a goal. In the spell leading up to this season, Silvan was just unstoppable those couple of years in the championship. Yeah, and just knows where the goal is. Just want the final whistle to go, you can yeah. tell. Derby Day, glory for the old gold. Bragging right secure. Like he was so actual. Like, he was relentless, wasn't he? Yeah. Never really relaxed. Derby Day win. So the last game, honey, another one of your iconic games, but maybe for a different reason. You've chosen 
the last game of the championship season against Brighton away, where the club is in turmoil, really, on the verge of a relegation. Where was your head at at this point? We got to this point where we have, we have actually have a good leader, Kevin Doyle, leading us out. Yeah. I think that had changed two or three times during the season. It went from Carl to Roger to Kevin there, the last yeah. game of the season, if I'm right in saying. So, manager just changed hands, obviously, as well. But for me, it is the time the club bounced back and it hit rock bottom and then started developing the next wave. If only you're looking back on time, could I have stayed at Wolves under the manage, uh, manager at the time? Yes. Should I have? Probably yes as well, looking at how the club bounced back, how it went about its business. And the memories that day created for me, it, it, was, it was horrible, it was toxic. It was, it was during the game, I think the Wolves fans vented their anger at the owner, at the players, and rightly so on some occasions. There you go, look at a young Matt Doherty, that's not young in his mentality as an age, he was always mature for his age and quite laid back, never really thought he felt the pressure of it all. But he was quite emotional on the day. Strange why, why Carl's playing, but he's not captain. I can't quite remember the circumstances. This was Dean Sauna's in charge here. But you, you look at the group, we'd brought in a lot of players under Stolasol back in the likes of Sacco, who was brilliant for Wolves. Tongo Dumbiri started this game, who was another unbelievable talent, but just probably not quite cut out for the league. It, it didn't yep. really suit him um, when you needed some real fighters in there. It was a bit of a, a mix of players from different managers and it just never, never worked, did it? Lua, Lua. Allowed to cut in field and hits it. Oh, it's found the bottom corner. It's a game that really strikes me for the dressing room and where we were at at the time. Like, but we really shouldn't have been in that position. But it was because of the build-up that we've had. I just vaguely remember the dressing room being not in a good place, and I've seen a lot of young faces around: David Davis, Jack Price, Matt Doherty. That we're going to develop and turn this club back into a force again. Talk about. Matt Doherty, difficult environment for him to come into here. Like as a young lad, only just come into professional football. And I know that he leaned on you quite a lot. Or you almost like a mentor to him when he first came to the club, weren't you? I remember Matt getting emotional after us. I said, what are, you, what are you getting upset for? Because you've done nothing wrong. Keep going, keep playing. And yeah, you're trying to make things happen. I'm not going to bend it in my right <laughs> foot from there. Uh, and I always thought, no, you, you, you crack on, lad. You keep doing what you're doing. Keep yeah. believing in yourself and your time will come. Don't let this situation take over your career. Get on with it. And, and luckily for him and a few of the other boys, it did. It's in front of the wall stands. You remember some of the chants here, and the ones that aimed at, aimed at Roger, who was who had a tough time as a Wolves player, didn't he? But do you think he was a bit of a scapegoat at that point? Yes and no. Yeah. You can't say here. I, I don't think his attitude he'd look back on now and say he would be proud of. But you know what? He looks back now with a little bit of regret. Some yeah. of us have all, we've all made mistakes and handled ourselves in situa situations. I think Roger's one of them now where he's looked at and gone, well, I didn't handle myself well there. But you know what? I'll say it now. And that's half the battle. Yeah. You, you yeah. make mistakes. Recognising it. And, and listen, he come from a successful Premier League team where he did really well as well. So he would have felt the shock and pain of not doing well. So yeah. I think we can all hold grudges. We can all get on with it. Say for, for different reasons, not for the highs of the Blackburn goal or the Derby Day win, you feel this was a pivotal moment in, in what Wolves is today? I, I think Wolves at that moment couldn't have been more toxic. Yeah. Uh, the relationship between the fans and the club, I think the, the owners that come in and the players that were here really were hungry to turn that around. The players definitely had a, had a moment where they would, they would have been looking at this. They would, I remember sitting in hot cold bats with David Davis Matt Doherty, Jack Price for a half hour, and they must have been listening to all of us going, what's going wrong? Yeah. So they must have been learning little, bit, little bits of information that would stand them in good stead when things went tough for them yeah. over a shorter period of time, because they had a lot of success. Richard Stearman was still here, you stayed here. So they had experienced boys to lean on to get them through the tough times. And this, I regret not being here for that. I generally do, I think I went to Ipswich, it was a great time for me, but really, if I stayed at Wolves, there would have been a little more longevity in me for sure. Yeah been such a pleasure reminiscing as well back on those games yeah and <laughs> you know what it's like you forget too yeah, so but it brings back happy memories and it brings back sad memories too but that's that's football we can do anything. icon of the seas arriving 2024